Good morning, everybody. So this right here, which you see in front of you, this is mob grazing. If you look right there. This, that right there, that's what it did look like. That clover, grass, that's where they're going to go probably later today. And this right here, this is where they were before, and this is true mob grazing. They've actually trampled and beaten everything down that is not grazed. Almost everything. You know, you got a little bit there at the post there that's been grazed. This is what it would look like right there at that post. That's what it would look like if it wasn't, uh, if they weren't mobbed in here and they were just traditionally moved around, you know. And this was, if this was rotational grazing, that's what that would look like. But in mob grazing, everything, every single thing that is not eaten is trampled down. So you get a lot of carbon, things like that, put down. But you also, if you look through here, you get all kinds of manure. Like if you look there and all the way around there, not only do you have manure, but you everywhere, but you've also got manure that is actually uh, scattered around like this. Right here, it's all scattered around. So this whole spot is covered in manure. And part of the reason for that is because they didn't have a tree to go poop under. They didn't have a creek to go poop under. You know, we controlled where they were. Now, you do want to give them a tree at the right time, you know, and all like that. So you have to be a good grazer. But there are strategic times you can do this stuff. This right here, you walk over here, this is traditional rotational grazing. Now, this is actually better than rotational grazing because it's a smaller spot than traditional rotational grazing. But this is a little bit more closer example of rotational grazing. Me and my wife, we moved them in here last night, okay? And um, when we moved them in here, we knew that we were getting ready to go to church this morning. I'm just about to have to go in there and get ready. I'm still out here drinking my coffee this morning. Um, we're we're going to have to go to church in the morning, and we don't want to have to worry about cows when we get ready to leave because, you know, you got to have some time off. You can't just work every single day, get up early every day and move cows and do this all the time. Sometimes you have to give yourself stuff, you know. So this is going to be more of an example of rotational grazing, this area. You know, and there are other reasons to do that. And I've got videos on my channel that kind of help you to understand um, some other good reasons for rotational grazing instead of uh, mob grazing. But what the difference is going to be here is I get people asking me, well, why can't you just leave them in here rather than pushing them so hard and making them trample it all? Why can't you leave them in here until they graze all of that down to the ground? Well, the problem is, is first off, if they graze most of it, they're probably going to graze most of it, like this right here. So you can see the difference in that grass versus this grass right here. Like you can really see the difference between there, okay? Both of those spots right there uh, kind of show an example of what this whole pasture would be like. They, they graze the clover off right there, all right? And they grazed the good, they grazed the candy grass off, and then they left this stemmy stuff right here. Well, that's fine. That's what they did over there in the mob grazing. They grazed the good, they grazed what they wanted. They just trampled the stemmy stuff. They knocked the stemmy stuff down, okay? They also distributed their manure better. Now, we've left them here overnight, so their manure is pretty, pretty well distributed. So if I do leave them in a more opened area, uh, and give them more room I'm typically doing it overnight when you give them a big open area during a hot day most of their manure is going to be out in a pond if you don't fence your pond off like we did that one we fenced the pond off you know or it's going to be under a shade tree okay unfortunately they're going to poop a lot of that stuff out so a lot of times when I do give them a bigger area I am giving it to them either on cooler days or, you know, there's other reasons, and I've got other videos to help you know when and why, you know. But a lot of times it is on cooler days, okay, that I'm, I'm giving them a better area or a bigger area, you know. Or it's overnight, because when you do it overnight, then the ground's still cool enough, uh, the, the area's still cool enough, everything's cool enough that they're actually distributing their manure everywhere. So... I'll do that like yesterday I did a, a pretty hard uh, mob grazing we moved them three times but we moved them three times in really tight spots okay so it was all throughout tight spots it was coming all the way up our driveway there it was just really really tight for them 
and we moved them there and it, so it's like they're grazing but they weren't grazing uh they weren't getting quite as much forage as they might need through a day okay um and you wouldn't want to do that continually you want to make sure you're giving them just enough uh to feed them that's traditionally what you do but sometimes you push them a little bit harder to get you know in certain areas where you want a little bit more push a little bit more um germination of new stuff you know what i mean we really wanted to trample a lot of this down and get this beaten down in there <clears throat> so when you do that you know you got to make decisions like that but when you push them that hard then that's that's a good time to go ahead and, and give them a break the next day or the next paddock you know what i mean give them a, a time to kind of recoup spread out a little bit rest and make sure they get enough enough to eat so at those times, you know, it is better to leave a pasture like this. I'll just mob this pasture next time.